off for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. So folks, in November, a major thing happened in our country. Uh, the Republicans took control of Congress and the Senate. Uh, and I, I guess there was a lot of things being done uh, in the country, and people said, look, we, we have to make a change. Uh, today, my guest is Congressman Lou Barletta uh, from the 11th U.S. Congressional District, and Lou was uh, re-elected. Congratulations on Thank that. You, Thank you, Sam. Um, but, Lou, I want to read something to you, okay? Th this is really uh, very interesting, and I, I want to applaud Anna Marie Kahn from Freeland. <clears throat> Yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> The letters to the editor says, where has my Democrat party gone? Okay, and I'll tell you, this is, the, I want to tell you, congratulations, Anna Marie, because I've been saying this for years. Okay, she says here, where has my party gone? Why are we running identities for office like women, Hispanic, instead of ideas? Are all Democrats supposed to be that lockstep, rigid, that it doesn't matter who, only what? We are becoming the party of small ideas, small hopes, we are abandoning the American tradition of praising the free thinking and recognizing the limitless potential in the people who solve whatever problems arise. And I got to tell you, uh, one of the, my mother, who was 87 years old, who became a Republican, not because, you know, uh, as a fact that the Democrats have the pro-choice, uh, everything that is absolutely immoral, they're there for them. Uh, and it, it, it seems that people do, do not really think about those things, but we were Democrats all our lives, and we were proud, my mom and dad, etc., because it was a party that was helping people, okay? And I'll tell you what, this is a great uh, letter to the editor. <clears throat> With that being said, I know a lot of things are happening, but now Congress, you guys, have the opportunity to put forth what you've been crying about for the last two years, okay? So where do you see... Where do you see us going in the next two years? Well, you know, in the House, Sam, we have, uh, we have tried to uh, uh, eliminate the dysfunction of, of Washington by uh, passing bills that go through what they call regular order. Now, what that means is, rather than these giant 2,600-page or 1,600-page bills that nobody knows what's in until you pass them, uh, the way it'll work is that each bill will go through the Committee of Jurisdiction, basically, the committee that oversees that issue, it will go through the committee and goes through a vetting process where both the Democrats and Republicans in that committee will have a chance to question and make uh, changes and amendments. And, uh, and then it gets passed out of committee. And then it goes to the floor where the entire House will vote on it. And again, you can go to the floor and talk about it. And the American people will be able to see the transparency of, of what we're passing. That hasn't happened in a long time before we were there. And what happens is uh, things just sit until we have these massive bills that, that really a lot of junk gets put into, a lot of bad things get put into it, and it gets covered up. Um, we have passed 386 bills in the House that have gone to the Senate. Good bills, jobs bills, energy bills, uh, uh, tax reform, things that we've talked about, Keystone Pipeline, things that will bring jobs to America. They've gone to the Senate where Harry Reid, one man, uh, was able to take those bills and just basically put them in his desk. They never saw the light of day. The other senators never had an opportunity to even vote on it. The American people never got a chance to see it. And things stopped dead in its tracks. That's over. Harry Reid's gone in, in another week. Uh, and uh, the Republican Senate will take over. And Mitch McConnell has promised that he will bring regular order back to the Senate where we'll have an opportunity to get those bills to the Senate, let them vote on it, and if we disagree, we could compromise or come out with something, and then it'll go to the president uh, for him to sign. That's the way it's supposed to work, and that's what we're looking forward to. Do you think the American public tried to send a message in November? Oh, I, I, I think there was no question. Uh, you know, they didn't like the president's policies. Uh, they didn't like the direction he was taking the country. Uh, and, and the Democrats paid for it. Uh, Democrats in the Senate, where the Republicans now took control of the Senate, and we increased our majority, the Republicans increased their majorities in the House. The American people were very clear they don't like Obamacare, uh, and they don't like the President giving amnesty and going around Congress uh, in making his own laws. Uh, they were very clear 
uh, in this coming election, and and the Democrats who are left, and I, you know, I uh, have an opportunity to talk to a, to a lot of them back home. They know it. They see it. That the, the American people are rejecting the direction that this president is taking our country. Well, you, you saw evidence of that with Matt Cartwright. Okay, I mean Matt won, but I mean considering considering uh, Dr. Moylan, who was a newcomer, okay, who didn't have any money at all. Okay, forty some fifty whatever thousand he had versus close to a million. Um, you know, he he loses. I mean, n not by that much, okay? So even the fact that he had a strong base and he was able to, you know, spend a lot of money and whatever, um, it, it tells you that people are, are really concerned, okay? All right, with that being said, now when you go, um, when, when you start next year, um, what will happen then? Bills will begin to go to the Senate? That's right. We'll have to <coughs> go through the process again. Uh, because at the end of uh, Congress, then we start over again. So the 386 bills that we passed, bipartisan bills, by the way, Sam, Democrats and Republicans voting on them, working together, uh, we, we will start over again. And we will have to get bills passed through the House. They will go over to the Senate, where Mitch McConnell will bring those bills up and allow the Senate to go through their process. So they pass the House and the Senate. Then it goes to the President. And what's happened here in the last few years, at least since I'm there, we pass bills in the House, they go to the Senate, Harry Reid just doesn't even bring them up. They don't even come up for a vote. Mm -hmm. And they just die. They sit there and they just die. Uh, that's why we have this uh, dysfunction. And, and it, it's really was Harry Reid was protecting the President from having to sign or veto bills that we passed in the House because they never got to the President's desk. Now they will. So what happens when these bills start going to the President? And from what I could see, he's still adamant of what he wants to do. He's, you know, you know he still wants to be a czar. Um, you know, he, I mean, you could see it on what he's, his demeanor. Um, what happens when he vetoes them? Do you have enough to override the not, veto? Not necessarily. <laughs> you know, all depends on what the issue will be. So there's still, uh, you know, there's not necessarily enough votes in the Senate to override the president's veto. There may be on some issues. Probably if he tried to veto the Keystone Pipeline, I would, I would believe that there's enough votes to overturn uh, the president's veto. So, you know, that, you know we, we need to wait and see what will happen. But we've got to get these bills to the president's desk. Uh, the American people deserve it. That's what they elected us for. We're doing our work. We're doing our job. And we're passing bipartisan bills. They want us to work together. They're very clear on that. They want Democrats and Republicans to work together. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten through that in the House where, where we're able to do that. It's just been the Senate that has been, really been the hang-up. I don't see that happening, and hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, and that these bills will finally get to the President, and we'll see what he's doing. Problem, Sam, is... Um, and it's really trouble. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or Republican. We have a president now that's going around Congress, uh, and that's a serious uh, threat to democracy. Care. You know, we cannot have any president, Democrat or Republican, mm -hmm. ever making laws. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, this is not a kingdom. Mm -hmm. He's not an emperor. Regardless of what party he's from, we have to have the checks and balances. When a president can begin to make his own laws, uh, we know what what kind of country this will turn into, and, and uh, we've got to be able to stop that. We can't sit back and say, it's okay, um, you know, we're going to let them do it, because then we would be setting a precedent for other presidents to go in there and, and to continue that. Now, you, you do know, Lou, that the, 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 you know, the, the, the liberal media press is um, concerned about two years from now, uh, who's going to be the president, and I don't know um, if they will give the current Congress the just do uh, as far as getting the news out um, when these bills hit and he vetoes them. So what is Boehner doing as far as PR is concerned and how, we, how will you get the message across? You know, to the, because again, you get see CNN and MSNBC and, and, and Letterman and all those guys, they're, they're, they're dreading the fact that there may be a Republican president, okay? And with all due respect to Letterman, but the point is he's a liberal, okay? And he, and he, and he makes sure wherever he could hammer a, a Republican, he'll do it, okay? Uh, which I think is unfair. I, I wish him the best. Um, but. Uh, what, what will happen that we can get that word out? Well, the mainstream media has been able to uh, uh, <laughs> keep a lot of the things that we're, work we're doing in the House undercover, yes. under wraps, yes. because Harry Reid never let, brings them up. <clears throat> They're going to have no choice but, but reporting when a bill gets passed in the House, goes to the Senate, when a Senate votes on it, and either they agree or disagree or they change it, and then it comes back to the House. Once that law is passed, in Congress, by the House and the Senate, 
and it goes to the president, they're going to have no choice but to report what, what the president does, whether he vetoes it, and then he's going to have to explain to the American people why he wouldn't pass a bill that, would, that is bipartisan in support and would be good for our country and why he wouldn't pass it. You know, the interesting thing, Lou, is, is that um, a lot of people don't get what Tim Murtaugh sends out to the press, okay? And he does a great job. Tim Murtaugh is doing a fabulous job for you because we get all this information of all the bills detailed. We, we know when you're going to be on, etc. And listen, most people do not get this other than the press. You, he's relying on us to get this information out to them. When I watch the news at night, okay, the 6.30 news, well, I'm only getting their opinion. I don't have the full detail of that bill, okay? That's where I'm saying where I, I, I want to throw up sometimes when I'm listening to them, you know, the three major stations, and, and you can see the slant. It's always a slant. How do you, I, I know I've addressed this with you before, but I'm in the business, okay? Doesn't that frustrate you? Oh, it frustrates the heck out of me. You know, again, someone who was a mayor, uh, who is, you know, realize that you got to get things done. You got to get things accomplished. And uh, we have a divided Congress where there's Democrats in the Senate, there was, and, and Republican in the House. And the American people want us to figure it out on how, how we get together. Harry Reid, one man, has able, been able to stop that. And I believe that has been in, in, in working with the president to make sure that these bills didn't get to the president because he didn't want to have to make a decision on whether to sign it or not. Well, that's over. American people have said, we have had enough. We don't like Obamacare. We don't like the government taking over our health care system. We don't want uh, amnesty to, to millions of people who are going to take American jobs. Uh, you know, we don't want presidents uh, overstepping their authority. When you ran for office, uh, re-election, you had some uh, things that you, that you told your constituents you were going to do. I want to address them when we come after break. Also, uh, I want to uh, talk about this Cromnibus um, uh, spending bill, okay, which is in itself very interesting. Folks, I'm talking to Congressman Lou Barletta, the 11th U.S. Cong Congressional District. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam Hassan Show, folks. Remember, 24-7, SSPTV.com. You'll watch all of our shows, and my email is sam at sspptv.com. Please, folks, if you have any comments on the show, uh, email me them. But, you know, this way uh, I can get a feel. I'm talking to Congressman Lou Barletta. And first of all, Lou, I want to tell you, uh, congratulations on, on your win, and I'm glad Thank to you. hear that everything went okay with your yep. surgery. Thank you. Because the day I called you, election day, I didn't know you were in a hospital. Yep. And I'm, I'm saying, come here and, you know, et cetera. But uh, thank God that went well. Um, all right, now, when you're talking about some different bills, um, Jim Murthaw sent this um, press release out. It says, Barle Barletta details highlights of the Cromnibus spending bill. First of all, what's Cromnibus? Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's part of the dysfunction of Washington, basically. <laughs> Rather than pass uh, the funding for each department separately, like the Department of Defense or the Department of Health and Human Services, rather than pass them separately, what has happened is we would pass them separately in the House. They would go to the Senate where they would sit. Well, now these 12 funding bills for each department to fund our government is sitting there all at once. And to pass and make, keep the government open, they put them all together into one giant bill called an omnibus, which is just a, uh, all of the spending bills in one giant bill. What happens with that, Sam, is that uh, the negotiations then begin that they start throwing in all of these really unfortunate junk gets put into it that the taxpayers end up paying for, and that's the way we end up funding the government. Well, what we did is because we wanted to stop the president's executive action on amnesty, which is illegal. Uh, we did not want to fund that. We separated the funding for the Department of Homeland Security out of those 12. So in other words, we passed 11. We held back the, the funding for the Department of Homeland Security, which will, would have the money in it for the president to carry out his amnesty executive action. And we passed what is called a continuing resolution to fund the Department of Homeland Security for two months only, which will give us time to let Harry Reid clean out his desk, the Republicans will take over the Senate, and we can now negotiate and defund uh, the President's amnesty action. So they added the CR in front of the omnibus, and they came up with the term cromnibus. I'm looking here, Lou, where, where you have the different national security, military, public safety, communities, coal. Um, 
let's talk about now are these things that passed already they, they are they, they are things that have passed through the okay. house so what you're saying is that uh, there's a there's a 521 billion dollar um, in defense spending includes one percent pay raise etc cetera, etc cetera. but here I find interested coal requires the Department of Defense to use anthracite coal to heat the Army and Air Force barracks in Germany that was language that I put in actually yeah uh, and uh, my predecessor before me uh, has been something that we've been doing here uh, <coughs> for a long time yeah uh, to uh, to make sure that that uh, we have a base over in Germany uh, we have coal uh, where, where <laughs> we could keep people working here and yet uh, it's economical and and uh, and ship the coal there. They're the kind of things that were in this bill that help us back here. I think what they're trying to do is, you know, when you talk about coal, they right away they throw the environment at you. That you're, you know, you're disrupting the environment. It's causing uh, cancer, uh, uh, the carbons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, on one of my shows with Anthony Orlando, who wrote the uh, uh, letter to the one percent. Um, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, we do want an environment that's 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 great, okay, and we don't want the gases. What what has, what has the government done to protect that, or have they gone too far? Well, they've gone way way too far. Uh, they've gone. The EPA is so out of control, Sam, that they are now regulating mud puddles, mud puddles. When we get a heavy rain, and and there's a mud puddle on a on a farm, they want to regulate that as as navigable water, little ditches. They want to regulate to the point where they're putting farmers out of business. They're making it very difficult to farm. Uh, you know, we can go, uh, no matter what the industry is, the overregulation of the EPA. Of course, we want to make sure we have clean air and clean water and we're taking care of the environment. And nobody is a better steward of the environment than our, our own farmers because they make a living off of sure. the land. Uh, but when, when we began, begin to put Americans out of work, and sending these jobs to China and other countries who abuse the environment worse than anyone. We're not helping the environment, we're hurting the environment. You know, we've got to make sure that we're keeping these jobs here, at the same time protecting our environment without going overboard. And EPA right now has been a, one of the departments who have uh, overreached their authorities. So what are you gonna, what is Congress going to do about it? <clears throat> well, one of the things we did in this bill right now, we, we roll back EPA's uh, uh, staffing to 1989 levels. Uh, five straight years now we've we've rolled back EPA uh, not, again not because we don't want to regulate and make sure we have clean air and water but we don't want to be putting people out of business and sending these jobs somewhere else Sam they, 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 for example Dodd-Frank it's a, another bill uh, that makes it very difficult for for our farmers to uh, borrow money we roll back some of those regulations and and help keep American jobs right here in America all right, I, there's so much I want to talk to you about. Let's talk about Cuba. Now, the first thing when Cuba came out, uh, is people saying, well, that's great. We're going to start going traveling. It's a good thing. Let's get our company. They're only 90 miles away from the United States, blah, 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 blah. Now, is it a good thing or a bad thing? No, I don't think <coughs> it's a good thing, Sam, because this is a country uh, that has, ha, has oppressed its people who don't have the same freedoms that you and I. Just as I can sit here today and criticize our own government, uh, they can't do that in Cuba. This deal with Cuba will not benefit or make the, the Cuban people any freer. It won't give them any more rights. It won't, it won't allow them to use the internet uh, uh, to have the same freedoms that we have. We have loosened the sanctions on a country that the dictators that have run that country will benefit from and use it against their own so people. I, 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 Innocent Sam, I've been questioning the president's foreign policies as, as much as I question some of his domestic policies. We did the same thing with Iran. This is a country that wants a nuclear weapon uh, so that they can blow Israel off the face of the earth. The sanctions that we had on Iran were working and that's why Iran came to the table because because the sanctions were working. The president loosened those sanctions. Uh, I don't believe it's gonna make the people in Iran uh, have any more freedom than, than they had before. Uh, why we're doing this with Cuba, where they can now turn around and make a deal with Russia. Uh, you know, this has not helped the people that we're trying to help. You know, I believe when you're, you're forming policies, if our goal is, is to free people from a, from a dictatorship or a government that is oppressing those people, then any deal we make should do that. This deal did nothing like that at all. All it did is it's going to make Cuba the dictators there, they're going to make more money 
and I believe they'll use it against their own people. Here again, you know, there had to be a, a, a motive or some reason why a ca uh, Obama wants to do this. You know, there, what there, was there, there's been no discussions with, with Congress. It hasn't been something that, that, that we could <clears throat> I could even sit here today and tell you what their thinking was, why they did that. Mm -hmm. There's no talk. There's no negotiations. And, we're, we're, you know, the president said that he was going to change the direction of this country. And I'm concerned in his last two years, Sam, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's going to do what he wants, uh, regardless of what Congress uh, feels mm -hmm. and what the American people, by the last election, uh, how they feel either. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens because, again, he will be setting a course for the next two, who the next president's going to be. Folks, I'm talking to Congressman Lou Barlett. I'll be back right after this break. <music> Folks, thanks for joining us. This Samuel Sancho. Uh, thanks for staying with us. I mean, my guest is Congressman Lou Barletta. Uh, we're going to have an exciting uh, 2015 and 2016, I'll tell you that. Lou, some of the things that you feel, you've know, got about three minutes left, what do you think uh, your constituents should be aware of about what you're going to be addressing? Well, one of the things, <coughs> Sam, is, is uh, uh, in speaking with, uh, with Speaker Boehner, uh, there were a lot of good things in that bill uh, that for Pennsylvania that we passed. Uh, there are a lot of bad things that are in it as well, uh, um, things that we wouldn't want to see money spent on. But... That being said, what I was able to do is negotiate myself a seat at the table. Uh, when we go back in January, Speaker Boehner said that I will play an integral part in forming our immigration policy in dealing with uh, the president's uh, recent uh, executive action on amnesty. Uh, I'm going to be able to play a major role in crafting that legislation uh, to, to defund uh, what, what I think is a national security issue and, and, and an American jobs issue uh, in granting amnesty to over 5 million, and that number could grow to be 10 million people. When it is so hard to find jobs right now, Sam, for the American people, we're going to bring 5 to 10 million more people in to compete for those jobs and provide them an incentive. Now, this is something that nobody is talking about in Washington but myself, is if, for example, if two people come for a job for you and you have 50 employees or more, if you hire the American worker, you have to provide them health insurance or pay a $3,000 fine. But if you hire someone that the president just gave amnesty to, you don't have to provide them health insurance nor pay a $3,000 fine. Who so, are you going to hire? Well, tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, this is unfair to the American people. It's putting our national security at risk. Uh, and I'm going to do everything I can to defund and try to stop this president uh, from, from uh, uh, taking American jobs and, and making it harder for Americans to live here in the United States. So I want to ask you a question, okay? Uh, here's the question. When you campaigned um, for re-election, you, you know, what was your general theme? What did you tell your people that you were going to do? I was going to do what I think was right, not what my party wants. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm there for the people. And if it means uh, doing the right thing for the American people means I don't get elected again, then so be it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather not get elected, Sam, than go there mm -hmm. uh, to do something that I don't think is right for my grandchildren, your grandchildren, and the next generation. We were blessed to live in this country. We were blessed to be born here. And we have an obligation uh, for the people that will come after us to stand up, make sure that we're protected, and make sure that uh, we provide opportunities. That's what America is all about, and that's what I'm going to do. And, and uh, you know, I really don't care uh, who likes it in Washington. Uh, all, I, all that matters to me is the people that send me there uh, because I realize uh, they're my boss, uh, not the people in Washington. So did they vote for Lou Barletta because he's Lou Barletta, or did they vote for you because you're a Republican? Uh, I've won in Democrat districts uh, every time I put my name on a ballot. So in other words, they voted for the person that, you know, you have a record and they voted for that. Uh, so people are looking for honest politicians, okay? Uh, that's the thing that really I was disappointed with Tom um, Tom Corbett, okay, who was an, an honest politician, uh, brought unemployment down, you know, you know, higher ed education. But when, when private, um, when constituents or, or uh, uh, get together and, you know, just vote for the party because they want that power back, you know, it, whether we've been a Democrat or Republican, I think that's so wrong. You know, I do wish uh, the best for Governor Wolf. I'm hoping he's going to do what he says. That, but it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's not about party anymore, Sam. No. People yeah. need to vote the person who, who are going to stand up and tell, do Tell that thing. to the head of the Democrats and the Republicans. They're both are both yeah. guilty of that. you got to vote straight Republican. Vote a straight Democrat. 
and senior citizens get wrapped, you know, et cetera, um, and it's not that I'm just Well, there's a lot of special interest groups that are involved, too, that, that, that go to Washington and they try to get you to vote one way or the other, and, you know, yeah. I've, I've had to walk away and turn my back on many special interest groups because I didn't think it was the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, how could I vote against uh, helping veterans' disability claims which there's money in this for them. bill for, yeah. you know. So, you know, you got to do what's right and weigh weigh the good and the bad. Sunday's uh, standard speaker, Hazelton standard speaker, folks. Uh, this Sunday's uh, this last Sunday's um, the 21st. Uh, added a letter to the editor. Where has my Democrat party gone? Uh, I hope that all of the heads of the Democrats uh, read this letter to the editor because it is right on target. Congratulations, Anne Marie Kahn from Freeland. Pennsylvania, and she's 100% correct in this, okay? Um, and we want to vote for people who are qualified. Boy, I can't say that enough. Well, Lou, congratulations again. Thank you, sir. I wish you the best. Hope Thank to you. see you a couple times on the show. Hold you Thank accountable you. like we always do. Thank you. Um, and best to you and your family. Thank you very okay. much. Folks, we'll see you next time.